Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to see a water distribution system. Previous lecture, we have seen the water supply scheme components and its details. So, in this particular lecture, we are focusing on water distribution system. Under the subject of environmental engineering one. So, contents of these lectures are which covers layout of distribution networks, methods of water distribution, storage capacity of elevated service reservoir, and underground reservoir. So, why we are providing distribution system or what is distribution system? The purpose of distribution system is to deliver water to the consumer end with appropriate quality, quantity and pressure. Distribution system is used to describe collectively the facilities used to supply water from its source to the point of usage. So the requirements of good distribution systems are Water quality should not get destroyed in the distribution pipes. It should be capable of supplying water at all the independent places with sufficient pressure head. It should be capable of supplying the requisite amount of water during the firefighting. The layout should be such that no consumer would be without water supply during the repair of any section of system. And all the distribution pipes should be preferably laid 1 meter away or above the sewer line. And it should be fairly watertight as to keep losses due to leakage to the minimum. So these are some requirements or important points while we are considering while we are constructing the good distribution system. In layout of distribution network, there are different types of layout of distribution network depending on the construction of roads or the planning of that particular city area. So the distribution pipes are generally laid below the road pavement and as such their layout generally follow the layout of roads. So depending on its road direction or road construction we are deciding the layout of distribution network. There are in general four different types of pipe network. So any one of which either singly or in the combination of both can be used for a particular place. So the types of layout of distribution networks are dead end system, radial system, grid iron system and ring system. So let's we see one by one. First is dead end system. This system is suitable for old towns and cities having no definite pattern of road. As you can see in this diagram, this is the typical diagram of layout of dead end or tree system. So we are also called it as tree system. As you can see, this is the main line which is follow the alignment of road. And the branches and submains are laid perpendicular or either perpendicular or inclined to this main line. So, when the road network is not constructed properly, so in that case, we are constructing such type of system that is dead end system. Why we are called it as dead end system? Because as you can see, there is no further connectivity after this end of this branch are submain pipes so that end is called as dead end so there are we are providing a minimum number of cutoff wall as you can see in this black dot so there are some advantages and disadvantages for the construction constructing of this dead end system so advantage is it is relatively cheap system at as we are providing the less amount of cutoff walls and the determination of discharge and pressure 
easier due to less number of words and the disadvantage of this system is due to many dead ends the stagnation of water occurs in pipes next is radial system so in radial system the whole area of city is divided into different zones the water is pumped into the distribution reservoir kept in the middle of each zone and the supply pipes are laid radially ending towards the peripheral area of that particular city so this is the typical network of radial system so in this system the whole city is divided into number of zones so in this particular diagram suppose this whole city is divided into four zones then each zone provided with centrally placed elevated service reservoir so in that we are pump the treated water and these are the pipes are laid radially to the consumer end so this system is used for the well planned city area so as you can see the main line is followed the alignment of center or the center line of road and the whole zone of city is whole city area is divided into these four zones so each zones has its middle placed the elevated service reservoir and through this we are supplying our distribution of water to this radially placed branches or submains so advantages of radial system are it gives a quick service the calculation of pipe sizes is easy so next is grid iron system it is suitable for cities with rectangular layout where the water mains and branches are laid in rectangles so this is the typical layout of grid iron system so as you can see the main line is followed by the center line or road alignment and the branches and submains are laid or placed in the rectangular manner in this system the layout is rectangular in nature and there are number of cut off walls provided at each, each junction so some of the advantages of this grid iron systems are water is kept in good circulation due to the absence of dead ends so we are avoiding or reducing or neglecting the dead ends as which we are providing in dead end system so which are eliminated in this grid iron system in the case of breakdown in some section water is available from some other direction and disadvantage of this grid iron pattern is exact calculation of sizes of pipe is not possible because of or due to the provision of walls on all branches and last type is or last layout is ring system so this is the supply main is laid all along the peripheral road and submains branches out from the mains this system also follows the grid iron pattern with the flow pattern similar in character to that of dead end system so determination of the size of pipes are easy advantages of ring system is water can be supplied to any point from the least two directions so this is the typical layout of ring system it is the combination of grid iron pattern and dead end system so as you can see the whole city is located around this peripheral area so mains is provided throughout this peripheral area and branches and sub branches are placed or laid at the rectangular pattern in between this peripheral area again there are provision of cut off walls at the end of sub mains so this is the combination of grid and pattern as this whole city is divided into rectangles and main is laid throughout the peripheral area and also this is the kind of the dead end system 
because there are no connectivity in between branches and sub branches so there are number of cut off walls and number of dead end systems so in previous slides we have seen the layout of distribution systems that is dead end system radial system grid iron system and ring system so next is methods of water distribution so layout is different and methods are different layout means patterns of distribution system and method of distributions means to which method we are providing or distribution the treated water to the whole system so for efficient distribution system adequate water pressure required at the various points depending upon the level of sources topography of area and other local conditions the water may be forced into the distribution system by following ways so methods of water distribution systems are the gravity system pumping system and combined gravity and pumping system so let's we see one by one so first is gravity system it is suitable when source of supply is at sufficient height most reliable and economical distribution system the water head available at consumer is just minimum required and the remaining head is consumed in the frictional and other losses so particular this kind of system or gravity system is provided when the water reservoir is located at the higher area and town or city is located at the lower area so we are pumping the treated water into this elevated service reservoir and it is passed through the city or town through the distribution system by following the flow of gravity next one is pumping system in pumping system the treated water is directly pumped into the distribution mains with without storing so in gravity system we are pumping the treated water first into the elevated service reservoir and then passed through the distribution system but in pumping system the difference is that the treated water is directly pumped into the distribution mains without storage we can also call it as pumping without storage system it is a high lift pumps are required for this system the high lift pumps are required if power supply fails the complete stoppage of water supply is there so this method is not generally used is the layout of pumping system as you can see there are pumps and city is located at above area above this level of tree treatment plant so in that in this case when the city is located at higher level than the treatment plant level they we are providing this pumping system and next is com combination of gravity and pumping system so this is most common system the treated water is pumped and stored in an elevated distribution reservoir and then supplies to the consumer by the action of gravity the excess water during the low demand period gets stored in the reservoir and gets supplied during the high demand period so this is the combination and this is the economical and efficient and reliable system so as we described in previous slide pay when there is excess amount of or ample amount of water supply then some water is first of all stored in elevated surface reservoir and then passed through this water through the flow of gravity to this whole city and when or some properties are located at the low lying area then we are transferring this treated water directly into the distribution system and through the flow of gravity we are providing this water so it is the combination of pumping as well as gravity system so next are the distribution reservoirs the distribution reservoirs also called as service reservoir are the storage reservoir which store the treated water for supplying water during emergencies and also to help in absorbing the r e fluctuation in the normal water demand so functions of distribution reservoirs are to absorb the r e variations or fluctuation in demand to maintain constant pressure in the distribution mains water stored can be supplied during emergencies 
location and height of distribution reservoirs should be selected properly and it should be located as close as possible to the center of demand the water level in the reservoir must be at the sufficient elevation to permit the gravity flow at an adequate pressure so generally we are following the flow of gravity the next are the types of reservoir so depending upon their elevation with respect to the ground level it may be classified into surface reservoir and elevated reservoir so let's see see one by one type so first is surface reservoir these are also called as ground reservoir because it these are established on the ground level it is mostly circular or rectangular in shape underground reservoirs are preferred especially when the size is large these reservoirs are constructed on high high natural ground and are usually made up of stone bricks clay or reinforced cement concrete the side walls are designed to take up the pressure of water when the reservoir is full and the or pressure when it is empty the position of ground water table is also considered by designing this type of reservoir the floor of the reservoir may construct it with the reinforced cement concrete slab or square stone block resting on the column to obtain the water type so surface reservoir are constructed to obtain water tightness bitumen compound are used at all construction joints at the top of roof about 60 cm thick earth layer is deposited and maintain green lawn to protect the reservoir from cold and heat for aeration of water and inspection ventilation pipes and stairs should be provided so this is the typical diagram of underground reservoir so as you can see the water is coming from this inlet pipe and stored in this reservoir tank so water level should be below this ground level as it is these are the underground reservoir so lining should be provided for the prevention of its leakage and the number of ventilation pipe should be provided So next type is the elevated service reservoir. So mostly we are using or constructing this particular type of reservoir. So elevated storage reservoir, also referred to as overhead tanks, are required at distribution areas which are not governed and controlled by the gravity system of distribution. These are rectangular, circular, or elliptical in shape. If the topography of town not suitable for under gravity flow the elevated tank or reservoirs are constructed they are constructed where combined gravity and pumping system of water distribution is adopted that is first the treated water is stored into the elevated service reservoir and then passed to the distribution system these tanks may be steel or rcc now reinforced cement concrete is commonly preferred for its construction the accessories of elevated service reservoir are inlet and outlet pipes overflow pipe discharging into the drain next is float gauge indicating the depth of water next is automatic devices to stop pumping when the tank is full next is manhole and ladder for the inspection next are the ventilators or ventilating pipes for the circulation of fresh air so these are the components of elevated service reservoir this is the typical diagram of elevated service reservoir as you can see the pumping stations are available at low lying area so through this pumping station we are pump the treated water into this elevated service reservoir the function of this elevated service reservoir is to store the water in huge capacity and transfer it to the distribution system to the consumer ends so next is the storage capacity of distribution reservoir the storage capacity of distribution reservoir 
is the summation of balance in storage what is balance in storage the quantity of water required to be stored in reservoir for equalizing or balancing fluctuating demand against a constant supply is known as balance in storage and the breakdown storage so it is the summation of balance in storage and breakdown storage so balance in sto storage is fulfill the fluctuation demand and breakdown storage is often called emergency storage is the storage preserved in order to tide over the emergencies caused by the failure of pump electricity or any other mechanism driving the pumps so if in case of there is failure of any pumping machinery so in that case we are using this breakdown storage so there is some standby storage or standby equipment which store this water for fulfilling demand water demand in case of emergency so the storage capacity is the summation of the balancing storage and the breakdown storage a value of about 25% of total storage capacity of reservoir or 1.5 to 2 times of the average hourly supply may be considered as the enough provision for the accounting in storage the emergency storages are includes the fire storage that is the third component of the total reservoir storage is the fire storage this provision takes care of requirement of water for extinguishes fires a provision of 1 to 4 per person per day is sufficient to meet the requirement of fire demand when the reserve storage is elevated the amount of fire reserve may be determined by formula r equal to f minus p into t where r is the reservoir storage in liter for providing the fire demand f is the fire demand in liter per minute p is the reservoir fire pumping capacity in liter per minute and t is the duration of fire in minutes so this is the formula of calculating the fire demand or storage capacity for the fire demand so the total reservoir storage can be finally be worked out by adding all these three storage that is balancing storage that is storage for providing the uh, uh, water demand per capita per day then the breakdown demand that is the storage of water considering in case of emergency that is fire demand and next storage is demand or reservoir storage for the fire demand supplying the fire demand so the total capacity of storage is the summation of this balancing demand breakdown demand and the fire demand so summary of this overall lecture is we have seen the different layouts of distribution that is dedian system dedian system radial system and ring system then different methods of distribution system that is gravity system combined system and both combined and gravity system and then the types of reservoir that is surface or underground reservoir and elevated service reservoir and next one is the storage capacity of distribution reservoirs so these are the overall contents of distribution system